Rolex condom, take one. Have you ever thought about how to protect that expensive watch that you just purchased? Well, I just bought myself this Rolex Daytona Bamford and it's got a satin finish, so I thought, why not test one of the protection products. In this case, I chose InvisiShield. InvisiShield was one of the products that was out there. Now, this is not a sponsored video. It's not promoted by any, any company, especially not InvisiShield. But I did the research, I looked around. They are more expensive than your typical brands, but I figured they're more expensive, maybe there's a better quality. The one thing that did actually sell me on this product was they claim that it's so transparent that you know, any gloss or any shine under the watch will still be visible. In this case, since it's a satin finish, I thought, all right, I don't wanna put anything on there that's gonna actually make it shine. I like that satin finish. Now, this, is, this finish is accomplished by sandblasting. I spoke to a dealer that said, it's not a big deal if you scratch up the watch. You know, it's very easy to accomplish, you know, to like almost repolish it. It has a couple of minor scratches on it, but I'm gonna try this product, first of all, to show you how this works and if it does and how well it looks. And second of all, because I wanna wear this watch a lot more often, and I don't wanna mess up this finish and have to get it sandblasted on a regular. Since not all of us are Rolex experts and not all of us do this on a daily basis, let's do this together, me and you. We're gonna test it out, see how it works. And just for reference sake's sake, this product cost me about $110. There are cheaper versions of this on Amazon. I decided to go with this because again, expensive watch, let's go with an expensive product. Let's get right into it. I'm gonna crack this thing open, see what's inside. Oh, oh, all right. So we have tweezers, we have a little packet. The packaging is really nice, I gotta say. Look, it's a packet with a card. Kind of useless. Thank you. So we have a, a swab cloth. This is to clean the watch. We have a dry cloth, I'm guessing, to do it post. And then we actually have the stickers, the protection. And now this is cut out for every single part of the watch. You do have to specifically order the one for your watch. I ordered it for a Rolex Daytona 116500. Obviously, you don't get to choose what finish, what material, what metal this is from, but it applies to all stainless steel, gold, white gold, rose gold. Let's crack this thing open. All right, so here are all the pieces. And I am not sure where I'm going to start, but this is a lot of pieces. It's kind of annoying that they don't actually give you an insta installation guide or mark the stickers. So you kind of have to figure out where each piece goes, which definitely is more difficult for somebody that's not an expert as myself. And I'm not really sure what goes first, the wet cloth, the dry cloth. So I'm just gonna kind of follow my own intuition and wipe this thing. I also brought a pair of rubber gloves because you don't want to leave fingerprints all over the watch. And in preparation, I brought a little glass of water because you do have to dip these stickers in the water before placing them on the watch. Now bend over. All right. Okay, first let me figure out where are we going to start. I think the best place to start is probably at the base of the band and then go down on each side. And now these pieces are pretty easy to figure out. Yeah, you have, you have squares. We also have the crystal. We also have the bezel. Now this has a modified bezel. Bamford, watch department, modified this Rolex to make an older Paul Newman with the, the dial, with the bezel. So that's actually why I fell in love with it. I've always wanted one of these. I snatched it before we could sell it. Okay, so I'm gonna start by wiping down the watch completely. This will remove any dirt that is currently on the watch. All right, I'm assuming I then need to wipe it with a dry one. Now again, this is an assumption because I have not watched the installation guide and the installation guide doesn't even go into this. If I mess it up, I did the research and they are pretty easy to remove. You just need to wet them again and pull them off using the tweezers. Like I said, this watch does have a couple of scratches on it already. I did not want to go through the process of getting it completely refinished, mostly because I really just want to wear it. 
Typically with my watches, I don't mind abusing them. That's what they're for. You wear them, you enjoy them. And then if you ever do want to get them refinished, you could. Now, again, this watch is a little bit more sensitive than any stainless steel gold watch. It's not as easy to just polish out something. You do have to get it, you know, with a whole sand, sand blasting process. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to start with the band, like I said, and see how that goes. Let's see how easy this is. Let's hope that this is not a complete waste of $110. They do advise you not to touch the bottom of the sticker with your hands. These are a pain in the ass to get out. Okay, I might get the hand, hang of this a little bit later. Okay, so I put the first piece on. It does say to press it to remove any water. And I just want to make sure that it's aligned properly. I have it aligned. I'm pressing to get the water out. Let me use this thing. All right. So as you can see, I got one piece on there. That only took 15 minutes. <laughs> now let's see. So they give you the lug covers. Let me go ahead and do one of those since we're already there. Some of these pieces are so tiny that it's pretty, uh, pretty difficult. Yeah. Okay, got that piece in place. Let's push out the water. This is kind of like wrapping a car where you have to push out the water. If anybody has done this before, comment, let me know how your experience was with this. This is clearly my first time doing this and I'm really interested to see the end result. I'm super worried that this is just going to be a waste of money. Okay, so we got one side done. Let's get to the other side. I wonder what the typical time is to put these things on. Like how long does it usually take people to do this? I mean, any videos that I've seen about this, you know, looked really easy and quick. Although that doesn't seem to be the case here. You probably just get better as you do this more often. Okay, got it on. Let's push. All right. Now we need the sides. I'm going to assume these are it because they do have the curve. So this is for the end links. I almost wish they gave you metal tweezers for this. Okay. This is definitely more difficult than it looks on TV. But imagine having all of these on and not having to worry about scratching your watch ever. We do get a lot of these watches, no, not these watches, but we do get a lot of watches in that already have these on. So that's actually, that was the determining factor in me doing this. I figured if other people are doing this and there's a reason that they're doing it, then why not give it a try myself and see how I like it. All right, let's do the other side. Feels like sometimes it's easier to put on, sometimes it's harder. I'm trying to figure out how to get the tweezers to not stick. All right, so we got that one side of lugs and end link done. It does take minutes for the glue to dry. And since it is water activated, supposedly again, dip your watch in water, use the tweezers to pull them all off. Shouldn't be a big deal. I'm going to try to do, to cover the top of it first, and then I'm also gonna do the buckle. And the band, I'll do on my own time, not to waste too much of your time. Let's try to get this side of the case covered. It's pretty clear which piece it is. There's only one piece that size. But given that this is a much bigger piece, I wonder how difficult it is to place this. A 
looks like I got it. Okay. That looks pretty good. It's really weird wearing gloves doing this because I'm not sure if I'm feeling that or the glove. This looks pretty good. I'm not sure if that's a water spot in there. Again, it's all supposed to dry off. I think that looks pretty good. Now, given that this is a custom job, the bezel is not your typical Rolex Daytona bezel. This is more of the Paul Newman bezel, which means that the piece that they gave me is not going to fit, but I can try doing the crystal. And I'll just take a look to see if the crystal actually is the correct size here. And that all depends on whether Bamford used the same size. Let's see. Eh, uh, not the right size. Too small. Now, again, it could be because of the customization, or I'm just not doing something right. That's also an option. But I'm not really worried about the crystal, so that's not why I got this. Let's go over to the buckle. The buckle gets the absolute most wear and tear, uh, constantly sitting at a computer, everything that you're doing, table scratches. So my daily watch is a Rolex GMT Master II, the Batman version, and I've had it for a couple of years now. I do wear it every single day, and it gets a lot of wear. Now, the majority of the wear that it gets is on the buckle because I'm at my computer all day long. Um, obviously, you ding it around here and there. Nothing too crazy, which is why I'm not that worried about beating this thing up. I don't really think I'm going to cover the entire watch with these stickers, mostly just where it does get the most tear or wear. Um, but I also want to kind of see how this looks. I'm not trying to alter the look of this. I don't want it to affect my love for this watch itself. All right, so the buckle has one thicker piece and then it's got the side pieces. Let's get right into it. Now, alignment is a little tricky. This is why I could never be a surgeon. Okay. Decent. Now, again, there are some scrat scratches already there. Not really worried about them. I just don't want to completely abuse this thing. Okay, so center portion done. Let's move on to the sides. And there are pieces for the actual buckle itself. That looks good other side and then we'll move on to the closing mechanism or whatever it's called so once the sticker goes on you still have the ability to move it around a little bit but then once you press it down it does stick more which allows you to start pressing out the water and drying it with the cloth if you look at this you know if i turn it if i angle it i can see the shine or, or sheen, I guess, from the stickers themselves. But straight on, I don't. I see the matte finish, which is what I'm aiming for here. I, I really want to have that matte finish come through. If this is going to mess with that, then I will have to get rid of it. All right, now let's do the crown area. This seems like it's going to be a little bit more difficult. So since these stickers are completely outside, they do not interfere with the closing of the clasp. They don't get in the way. Maybe they would if I misalign something. This is definitely a little bit more difficult because, uh, actually, I guess maybe it's not. It goes right around the Rolex crown. Yeah, that was actually pretty good. That was surprisingly simple. Let's take the side pieces. I should
should have timed this to see how fast I can get it done. That would be interesting. We should have a race. Who can get it done fastest? It's funny because I once considered offering this as a service to our clients that if they purchase a watch from us, if they want, we can add these for them. And I wondered how many people would take advantage of it. I'm not really sure. Like, what's everybody's opinion on these things? Like, are they recommended or, or even, you know, liked by users? I did recently see a forum uh, post about the, the other type of watch protection. It's kind of like a, the liquid stuff. It's almost like nail polish, you know, that you put on the, the watch. And people were talking a lot of shit on that thing. Uh, they were saying it's going to get in places where it shouldn't be and that it's complete crap. That's why I decided to go with the stickers instead. Again, not sure whether that was the right choice or not. You know, I'm also not sure how long you're supposed to leave it in the water, like just a dip. One recommendation I would give the company is provide better instructions. Because that would be awesome. And I don't want to have to scan a QR code. I'm like a boomer at a restaurant. Give me a fucking menu. <laughs> Sorry if I offend anybody. Okay, we got that done. One more piece and our buckle, well, at least the top of the buckle is done, I don't know. I assume they give you sides of the buckle. They do, okay. All right, so our buckle top is done. You know what I also wish? I wish that the stickers were thinner. Not like you could really see it, but if they were thinner, kind of like a PPF, that would be great. And I wish that they did come in matte because that would be awesome because then you could actually make your polished watch a matte watch or for a matte finish like this, it would be perfect. So we got the buckle and the safety lever, which we found out is the official name of that closing mechanism. We got that done. Now there are two more pieces for the side of the buckle. Okay. Push it down. It's funny because when the light shines, I see the sheen on the buckle. I'm not sure if I like it or I don't. I'm going to have to wear this for a little bit before I make a decision on it. But it, the sides of the buckle really only have two pieces and they're pretty flat and relatively easy to just put on. I am not sure how much wear the sides of the buckle actually get. I haven't looked at my Batman to see if it's like beat up on the sides, but I guess wear a watch long enough and it'll get abuse everywhere. Time will tell. Interesting. All right, another smooth placement. This wouldn't be worth $100 just for like the buckle, right? I mean, to protect just the buckle, I would probably just get the Amazon version, which leads me to want to put in all of these just because I paid for it. Um, but typically, I think the most protection I would want would really just be on the buckle. I'm not really worried about scratching the links it's definitely much more rare. Okay, buckle is complete. So now we have the buckle, we have the side of the case, we have the one end link, where typically you would have the crown guards. I don't have them here because this is a modified version, but you do have the options. Let's try to do the other side. Nobody sells Paul Newman kits. Okay, so we got one side. There's also the piece that goes between the, the crowns, multiple. I am the wrong person to be doing this. But then again, I feel like I'm the target demographic for watches. I don't really care. I don't care the reference number. I don't really care about what the parts are called. I just care that they look really nice. I appreciate the engineering. I appreciate the finishing. I like watches that look good. 
I like celebrating accomplishments. Why do they give you double of everything? I guess, is it just in case you f*** up? Oh, okay, not everything, but they did give me doubles of certain parts. And I'm wondering why. You know what they should do? They should just like send somebody with you to install this for you. <laughs> for $100, somebody actually comes out and does it for you. You ever um, go to the mall to get that, to buy one of those uh, cover, like the screen protectors for your phone, and the guy just does it for you? Should be the same thing with this. I do assume that if you go to like a typical watch dealer, they'll do this for you. But they assume they would charge you handsomely because this is time consuming and tedious. Okay. Got that done. What else? They do have a case back cover. Why would you need that? I'm not really sure. All right, so we're not doing the crystal. We're not doing the bezel. All right, let me do the other side of the lugs. So it looks like they do provide you with multiples pretty much for every piece in case you mess up. So again, I, I appreciate that because at this price, if you mess up, and it also took uh, about a good week or so to get here, they manufacture these on demand. They don't actually have them in stock. Okay, I got one side done. Move on to the next, then we'll go to the centerpiece. Since we have nothing better to do, this is what we're doing today. Uh, I'm also wondering, like, what's your opinion? Is this like something cheesy to do? Like, a, it's almost like people that don't have covers on their cell phones. You know, like that's the cool way of having a cell phone. I have a cover on my cell phone. <laughs> Am I not cool? I used to be cool. Now I'm cool in other ways. Still, you know what, I'm, what I am? I'm a, I'm a cool dad. You ever go to like, you know, you ever see like high school friends and you're like, holy shit, what happened to them? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we got the main parts covered. We have the case, we have the buckle, we have the locking mechanism, we have the sides, and we have the end links. The only thing that's left to do here is the rest of the links themselves. So I'm going to speed this up for you guys. Finally got done. It took less than I thought. Um, the second side of it was a lot easier to do. Obviously just getting the hang of it. But overall, it does seem to be pretty cool now. I'm assuming it's still drying a little bit. It's got a plasticky feel to it now. I do see the reflection now. Obviously there is a bright light pointed at this. So that's a little different than every day. But if I put it on and I'm wearing it, it's weird because now I, now I know that there is, you know, stickers all over it. So I'm, it's going to be, you know, catching my attention every time. I am seeing some areas where it looks like there might have been bubbles. I'm going to try to iron them out. Uh, I could still always take the piece off and either replace it or put on a different one. Overall, I think it's a pretty cool feature, a pretty cool tool, pretty cool product. Um, I'm going to wear this watch every day for the next week and kind of see how it absorbs the, the abuse. Yeah, ultimately that's what I want to do. I want to see how, you know, it works and then I'm going to take them off. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'll just keep them on forever. We'll see. I want to see if anybody actually notices that I have them on. Um, people are going to ask me to see my watch, hold my watch, take a look at it. So I want to see how they react. Now, if you are looking at it, you could tell that there is something on there from certain angles. 
because the stickers don't actually cover the entire part. They're like a little bit short for each link, for example, each part of the link. They're not 100%, but it looks like the lugs are fine. The side of the case is cool. Yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy with this product. I'll see how it works after, you know, the next couple of days of wearing it. Um, I don't know if I would recommend it unless you are really worried about abusing your watch. Because if you think about it, a watch is meant to be worn. A watch is meant to be abused. abused. And at any time, if you really want to bring it back to life, you could always take it to a watchmaker and have it refinished. That's my take on the InvisiShield or really any cover that you use to protect your watch. But putting it on wasn't so difficult and it looks pretty cool. Tell me what you think. Would love to hear your comments. Would love to hear what you think about the episode, what do you think about the product, what do you think about the end result, and ultimately what you would like to see in the future. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe, comment, like, share this video with your friends, and let's move on to the next one. See you guys next time on the Gray Market Podcast.